What are you consistently always building? A pipeline, you're always in front of people, which means you're filling those three days with activity every single week, and you're, you're actually gonna get more time off, aren't you? Think about it, if you've got 13 weeks, what's 13 times four? It's 42 days. What's three weeks? 21, I doubled your vacation time. Make sense? Again, I'm not telling you you have to do this, but what I am telling you is that planning and preparation are so important as a business person. Absolutely, you need to enjoy time with family, you need to take vacation, you need to take holidays. I want no one in this room to burn out and be falling off the chair, saying, Mike told me to do it. Don't want that, okay? <laughs> do not want that at all. But <laughs> so I have Mike crack up. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, I do wanna make sure that you have a clear and concise business plan. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right, so as we're coming into January, this 90 days is so crucial that we hit it, we hit it hard, so that as we come into spring and we come into summer, we can start to effectively plan because we've done all the necessary things now to get us organized to be able to make sure we take that time when we wanna take that time, when it's nice to take that time. You know what I mean? It's gonna be minus like 24 on like Wednesday. Who wants to go out and just play in the snow? I don't know, not me, but it could be you, okay? So again, we wanna make sure that we're tracking, we're organized, and we understand what activities to be engaged in. So this shouldn't come as a surprise. There's a six-point marketing system. We've talked about it before. We'll talk about it again. There's various different activities you should be engaged in in order to build your business, okay? As a representative out in the field, sales leaders in the field, whoever is out there engaged in activities, if you're not doing something here that creates an opportunity for you to have an action or an outcome, it shouldn't be done in prime time uh, or prime calendar time. Does that make sense? In other words, if it's two o'clock in the afternoon, sorting through your referral list, probably not something that you should be doing at two o'clock in the afternoon. That's a nine or 10 o'clock at night thing before you go to bed, because at two o'clock in the afternoon, you have an opportunity to do one of these different activities that can get you in front of somebody to talk to somebody about something. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, it's about prioritizing. Warm markets, we know, those are anyone that we have a relationship with that knows us by our first name. And then an extension, we wanna make sure we're following up with our own existing customers. Just because you put something in place with somebody six months ago, doesn't mean that their circumstance hasn't changed in the last six months, wouldn't we agree? How many people have had something dramatic happen to them in as short of a time frame as a month? Two months, three months, six months. It can happen, can it? One day everything's fine, next day you break your wrist. One day everything's fine, next thing you know, there's a relationship issue, whatever it might be. Life changes, and so as such, we wanna be consistently building on the relationships with the people we have, and we wanna be following up with them to make sure that whatever they've got is being maintained and, and is also being the right program for them at any given time. T-System, what, what is that? Do we know what the T-System is? It's talking to the neighbors next door and across the street from any appointment you have ever before you leave. So if I go to see Lee Jay and you know, I'm leaving his appointment, I wanna say, Lee Jay, out of curiosity, do you know your neighbors next door and across the street? He might only know one of them. And he says, yeah, Jennifer lives next door. Do you know your other two? No, I don't really know them. We don't really talk too much. What does Jennifer do? Do you know? I, you know, no, she's working a lot of early shifts and stuff and I see her you know, dressed up. I think she's a nurse actually, because when she heads out, oh, okay, great. So now I can stop in with Lee Jay's permission. I say, Lee Jay, would it be all right if before I leave, I introduce myself to your neighbors and I'm sure you'd be okay with me letting them know that we do business together, right? Now again, notice how I said it. Did I ask his permission? Did I ask his permission? Did I ask his permission? Yes. I did, but not necessarily. Lee Jay, I, I, I made it assumptive. I'm sure it would be all right. Notice the difference. If you just say, would it be all right? Chances are he's gonna do what? I mean, yes or? No, I'm sure it would be all right is assumptive. You have a higher probability of him saying what? Yes. yes. It's the same thing when on the, on the applications, you know where it says, do you give combined insurance permission to show your name for marketing purposes? Do you know, yes. I'm, yes. rewind, uh, on the application, you know where it says, yes? Yes? yes. 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 Is anybody, someone, some, no, okay, all right, okay, we're good. So you know where it says, do you give combined insurance permission to show your name for marketing purposes? Do some of you get a no there? All, yes. all the time? It's probably how you're asking. I'm being honest. Because Jennifer, if I said to you, Jennifer, I'm sure it'd be all right to use your name for marketing purposes, the same as many of the other customers we've spoken about today to make a difference. What do you think? How you ask the question is everything. Because at the front end, 
how many of you, out of curiosity, at the front end of your sales process, talk about many of the clients that you've done business with and circumstances that have occurred to them? How many of you? I'm assuming all of you. Yeah. Would I be wrong? Do you just go in there and be like, nothing ever happens to anybody, no accidents, no sicknesses, but are you interested? Does that happen? No, I assume, and maybe I'm incorrect, that many of your presentations start off with, let me tell you about some of our clients and what's happened to them, right? Well, if you start your process like that, and you circle back later when it comes time to getting their name for marketing purposes, that name, as you know, isn't going on a billboard saying you're a policyholder of combined, it's giving you permission to talk about their story, yes or no? Yes. So if I say to you, hey, Zenny, I'm sure it would be all right to use your name internally with our company, the same as many of the customers we spoke with you about earlier today, right? There's a higher probability of her saying what? Yes, because it's how you ask the question that's important. Now, don't try to like, you know, strong arm them like the Italian mafia. Zenny, we're using your name, right? Hey, forget about it. Hey? It'd be a shame for something to happen here if your name is not in my book. You know what I mean? Not good. Okay? Do not recommend that. <laughs> At the end of the day. We're good? We understand? Okay, so the T system, again, I'm way off track. I don't know how that happened, but it happens. Uh, we're talking to the neighbors next door and across the street. And that's an opportunity. Think about it. If you have a various number of appointments, whether it's from referrals, existing customers of your own that you're going back to see, uh, new prospects that you met from one way or another, warm markets. If you had 10 appointments during the course of the week, well, I assume that a good portion of those people have neighbors. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So if there's 10 appointments and each of them have neighbors next door and across the street, that means that you have how many business opportunities because of those 10 appointments? 30. 30. Well, if I talk to 30 more people than Randy, who do you think has a higher probability of finding someone that sees value in what I do? Me, because who have I talked to? 30 more people than Randy. Make sense? So again, this is an activity that we want to be engaged in because it can take all of a minute. If they say, no, I'm not interested, no problem. But you miss all the shots you don't take, right? Okay, great. So from there, we've got referrals and recruits. We know what that's all about. Cold prospecting, the elements that we talked about in the workshop, you know, B2B, residential target marketing, three foot rule, and events and trade shows, right? And then, oh yeah, target markets is right there. Target markets, focusing in on that specific trade profession that we know has a high need for what we provide, okay? So uh, as we move forward from there, pre-planning is absolutely crucial. Again, I talk about the plan. I talk about the plan. And in the 90 day blitz, you heard Ray just drill it, calendarize, 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 because it's everything. It is absolutely everything. Again, I talk about the summer. You want to take three weeks vacation? Great. There needs to be a calendarized amount of a surplus of activity before and a surplus of activity later with a game plan that gets you through that five weeks we just discussed without putting you in a financial strain so that you're planning for what's going to occur. You need to almost make the surplus of what you're going to spend so that you don't come out flat-footed, now wanting to scramble to try to figure out what the solution would be. So again, that preparation, that planning is so important. Pre Here's the thing that's crazy to me, and, and I mean, many of you might be guilty of this, I don't know, but have you ever noticed that people spend more time planning a week-long vacation than they do their lifelong goals? No, seriously. How many of you have taken a vacation somewhere for a week? Just one or two of you? Are you guys scared of me? Did, I do, did that mafia thing like throw you off? How about Tony, hey, forget about it. I mean, take these names down of the people that aren't putting up their hand. We got to talk to them later. You know what I'm saying? All right. So how many of you t have taken a week-long vacation before? Okay. How much time did you put into planning it? You're like, oh, you know, where's the restaurant? Where is, where is it that I want to, you, right? You did. You figured out the, the best place that you wanted to stay and, you know, the best, whatever. You looked into all this stuff. But yet then when we think about, when it comes down to goals, right, if someone were to give you a, a vacation, you'd probably accept it. would be like, okay, this is awesome. But here's what's interesting. You might complain while you're on that vacation because you didn't have the time to prepare effectively and you find out later there's a bunch of things you missed. Is that fair? Yeah. So you leave there and you're like, what do you mean there was an entire amusement park? Nobody told me this. If I had booked this vacation, I would have been at that amusement park. So you're mad that you got a free vacation because you missed out on the amusement park, but you couldn't plan for it, right? Now here's the thing that's interesting, is that if someone wasn't giving you that trip, the only thing that would have got you that trip would be the goals that you set for yourself to engage in the right activity, to make the necessary money, to go on the vacation to begin with, but you'll spend more time planning the vacation than you will what's necessary to get you there. Make sense? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But that's what we do. 
So preparation, planning is absolutely everything. Calendarizing what you do, absolutely everything. It is all a matter of understanding that you need to map out where you want to have your business opportunities. Warm market lists need to be completed and updated on a regular basis. For some people, not your guys' organization, there's lead cards and assignments that get issued that need us to go in and see them and all that kind of stuff. Well, if there are persons in that circumstance, they should know where they're going beforehand. They should be breaking it all down, all that kind of stuff. But you want to have a planning session and you want to be communicating with your leadership team. Communication is absolutely everything. Guys, I will say this. I mean, you, the sales leaders as a part of TTO, top notch, top tier. Hands off, hats off to you. I mean, you guys genuinely care. You're willing to go that extra mile. You're willing to go on those late appointments. You're willing to be there first thing in the morning. Your phones are on. You're, you're available. And, and kudos to you. And thank you for everything that you, you, you ladies and gentlemen do. But guys, you need to also understand sales representatives that are working with these people understand that the sales leaders need balance in their life too. And I don't mean that disrespectfully and say that you don't deserve their attention, you do, but communicate that attention. As an example, the last thing that Zenny needs is for you to call her at eight o'clock at night to show up at a nine o'clock appointment when you hadn't communicated with her what was going on through the course of that week. Does that also make sense? It'd be significantly easier for Zenny to support you at eight o'clock at night had she known yesterday that you have an eight o'clock appointment. Does that also make sense? So let's make sure we're communicating amongst each other through this process. Not only is it important that you put your plan together, but that plan needs to be communicated if you're looking for support, if you're looking for help, so that we can do the best we can do to be able to get there, be effective, and help you with what you need. Does that make sense? Would you not say that a teamwork is give and take? Right, it's all about balance there, okay guys? So, next step is calendarization. Uh, what it all comes down to is blocking off all of the time you're not available first. When you're looking at a calendar, and I do highly recommend, and you can use whatever you want. If it's old school, you want to use a date timer, good for you. That's cool. Uh, but I recommend technology because it's available. It's there. Uh, Google calendars are amazing. They allow you the opportunity to put your calendar together, sync it to your phone. You've got it right there, but you can also share it with other people. So if I want Randy's support on something, I can share my calendar with him, and Randy can now see everything that I'm booking in as I'm booking it in, and he's now perhaps available to come support me on some stuff, as opposed to me having to call him all the time about what's going on, makes sense? Vacation, because again, it can get lonely out there and all of those kinds of things, right? But the first thing you always wanna do is start, start your calendar with everything that you are not available for. And I mean, Dropping your kids off in the morning at school, picking them up from school, uh, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments. Ray was talking about it in the 90 Day Blitz, date night, right? You guys, for, for those of you that have a spouse, have family, book your family time. Book your date nights, book it. And I know Ray said it in the meeting, it might not sound romantic, but it's a heck of a lot better than ignoring the spouse. Trust me, okay? Just trust me, okay? That's all I'm saying. It's just leave it at that. So calendarize it all. Because now what you want to do is you want to work backwards to figure out, again, the price you're willing to pay to live the dream that you want to have. And what do I mean by that? How many hours are there in a week? 168. Let's be completely honest. How many of them are you going to spend sleeping? Be honest. Do you sleep seven hours a night, six hours a night, four hours a night, 12 hours a night? 12 hours a night. So seven? So let's take seven, okay? How many days of the week are there? Seven, so that's how many hours? 49, okay? You know what, I'm gonna do eight because it's gonna make the math easier for me, okay? So eight hours a night you spend sleeping. So that's 56, right? If there's 168, what's 168 minus 56? 112, right? We all good? You sure about that? Is it? Are we? We sure? <laughs> This is 112, okay. So now you've got 112 hours and the first thing you do is you start blocking off all the time slots. You're not available for personal reasons. And I mean this when I say it, take as much time as you want. What did I say? Take as much time as you want. Tony, you heard me say that, right? Take as much time as you want. And this is very important. And there's a reason why I'm saying this. Okay, if in the morning you need an hour to drop your kids off and pick them up in the afternoon, that's another hour, that's two hours a day, is that fair? So that right there over the course of a week is 10 hours. 
Let's assume for a moment you have a doctor's appointment and that's gonna take up four hours of your time, so now you got 14 hours. You book a date night for an entire evening, so you book off another six hours, now you're at 20 hours. You take an entire day on the weekend or two full half days or whatever you wanna do for Saturday and Sunday and you make that family time for whatever, but it's blocked off, it's calendarized, so now you got another, I don't know, uh, 20 hours, let's call it. So that's 40 hours. Is everybody with me? Everything you've booked off, the time you wanted to take with your kids, the time you wanted to take with your spouse, the time you needed to get your people where you needed to get them and all this kind of stuff and appointments and all that jazz. You booked it all off, right? Well, what's 112 minus 40? That means that you're technically available 72 hours a week to build your dream. But here's what I found, is that many of you will probably only commit to 32 of those 70 at a time management and not focusing in on keeping that calendar in front of you. But remember what I said at the very beginning, take as much time as you want. So if you only decided to take 20 or 40 hours, who's that on? You. That means you've told yourself that the other 72 hours are critical to you focusing in on building the life that you want to build, living the dream that you've set out for yourself, making a difference for you and your family, but then you're shortchanging yourself and only committing to 32 of them. Where are the other 40 going? If you want to take 60 hours, 80 hours, fine, but what must you do? Book them. Is that fair? If you want to be a business professional, I said to you again, take as much time as you want. If 72 hours a week is going to absolutely kill you, your momentum is dead, you can't make it happen, then fine, commit to 52, commit to 42. But at the end of the day, you better look at your calendar and say, okay, all this time is booked off and this is what, I mean, in this moment, when I'm doing this, I'm doing that. When I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Because it allows you to have balance and look forward to something. Is that also fair? Okay, because when you're looking at your calendar, the next thing you want to do is you start booking appointments after you've taken all the time that you want. If, again, we go back to that example and you have 72 hours available to you to go out there and make it work, let's shorten it back and say maybe you've got 60. So you've got 60 hours. Maybe for some of you that have other employment opportunities, you've got 30. But again, what are you doing with that 30 hours then? Because here's what I know. A person that really wants to make a difference is going to do more in 30 hours than someone in 100. Yes or no? Okay, fair enough. So we now start booking appointments with our warm market, with our existing customers, with our referrals. We've got the calendar in front of us. We know what time slots were available and we start to book that stuff in. This stuff should start at the front end of every week. And I know you guys are weekend warriors. You guys go out there, you close a significant amount of business between Friday and Sunday. And I gra graciously appreciate that. And I know that for many of you, you know, you've got you know, religious things that are going on various different times. I'm not telling you to do anything that messes with what you've got and what's important to you but you do need to allocate time on the front end, whether it be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, to start to get organized into Monday, because what will happen on Monday if you don't? You'll have a very slow start. And that's okay for many of you, because you do have a strong finish. But again, if you're gonna capitalize on your time then, you might wanna start taking an hour on Friday, as much as it might cut into something else that you're doing, to start to book up one or two things on Monday to give you even more momentum into the front end of your week to be able to get you to that next step. Does that make sense? And again, I'm not in any way, shape, or form telling you you need to become workaholics. What did I say? Take as much time as you want. Make sense? Okay, so we start to book. After appointments have been booked, you're gonna to start to notice that there are open time slots that you've allocated for yourself to work where nothing is scheduled. This is where it's crucial for you to start to book income producing activities, things that are actionable, okay? As a prime example, if on Monday, we'll talk about Monday again, you know you have a business overview meeting that's at seven o'clock at night, but you have nothing planned and you're available to work between one o'clock and five o'clock Monday afternoon, what would the best activity for you to engage in if you're trying to go out there and prospect and build, build, uh, build a clientele beat? What do you think? Prospecting, Prospecting how? With, uh, Sorry? Well, you're gonna do the 7 p.m. training, you've booked that, but what I'm saying is imagine you have one o'clock to five o'clock available on, on Monday, You've got nothing else planned. You're fully available to work. You've got no other prior commitments. So what could you do in that time slot that could lead you to building your business, that could lead you to your inventory? Business to business? Who are you gonna get in front of if you're in business to business? People. What are people? Your inventory. What else could you do? You could call, but who are you gonna call? If you call people, 
that are in your warm market, where are they probably between one o'clock and five o'clock? Working. Working. So again, are you telling yourself you're engaged in an activity that isn't going to, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Again, we need to think this stuff through. Whenever you're booking your calendar, you want to sit there and you want to actually take a minute and you want to say, okay, what would be the most effective income producing activity for me to do right here? What leads me to the most opportunity to get in front of my inventory, which is people right here. Once you've come up with that solution, that's what you book. Does that make sense? So it might, you might be avoiding business to business, but you say, okay, Monday I got from one to five. Best thing for me to do is four hours of B2B. But here's the good news. As you continue to book various different activities, what you always want to do is color code them. So B2B might be red because you hate it. I don't know, whatever. Or market could be a nice soft blue because you love these people. I don't know, whatever it might be, but color code it. Here's why. On Monday, if in the morning you had time for your family, and let's say family is, I don't know, orange, you see orange in the morning. Just at a glance when you're looking at your calendar, you see orange in the morning, and orange makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy because you know it's family time. Or I hope it makes you feel nice and warm and fuzzy. <laughs> but you're not dreading it. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, so nice and warm and fuzzy. All right. In the afternoon, you see that red. You're like, oh, man. Oh, but then, you know, the business overview is in purple later that night. Here's what I learned about people psychologically. When you have the ability to look at something and you can differentiate colors, you know that something has a beginning and an end and you're more committed to it in the moment because you know it has a beginning and an end. And when you see a different color, you immediately associate with the fact that something else is coming that's different than what you're in, which means you're more committed to what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect example, if you're on the treadmill, okay, and maybe you hate the treadmill, obviously I need to get back on the treadmill, but anyways, <laughs> all right, when you're on the treadmill and you know you wanted to spend 20 minutes on the treadmill, is it better to set the timer at 20 to count down or start it at zero to count up? Think about this for a minute. Why count down? Have you noticed that Somewhere in the middle, you're like, oh, God, I was just left 10 minutes. When you get to five, you've got more energy. Have you noticed that you're like exhausted halfway through and you're like, but then all of a sudden you've got more energy when there's five minutes to go, four minutes to go, three minutes to go, because what do you know is happening? It's coming to an end, which means you're more committed to it. Perfect example again. How many of you have GPS? How many of you had to drive somewhere that's four hours or longer? Okay, have you put the destination in a GPS? Does it go from zero to 400 or does it go 500 kilometers backwards? Backwards, now, have you also noticed that if it's a long drive and you're tired and all that kind of stuff, if it's a four hour drive, you're like yawning, at, you know, hour two and hour three kind of comes around. When there's about 45 minutes to go, it's like, woo! Have you noticed? It's weird, isn't it? All of a sudden you're just like, yeah! I'm excited, I'm, I'm awake. It's because you know it's almost over. You're almost there. You've almost achieved it. Okay, it's the same thing with making sure you color code these things. There is going to be various different types of activity that might make you uncomfortable, that you might not necessarily enjoy. But when you take the necessary time to plan it out and keep it in front of you, you'll be more committed to it because you're just looking at it psychology, psychologically. You're like, okay, I'm doing this for four hours. I'm not stopping, I block the entire time off, I'm engaged in this activity. If I get a million no's, I get a million no's, but here's what I know. Eventually what will happen? It will be done. I will hopefully get a yes, but through that time frame, it comes to an end. And then I engage in a different activity, and I have a different energy level when I go into that than just sitting back saying, I'm in this right now and let's see what happens. Because you might have that four hours, and instead of engaging in the full four hours, because you didn't keep something in front of you and make a commitment to yourself, you end up only engaging in one out of the four and lose out on three hours worth of opportunity for yourself to make a difference whether you were comfortable or uncomfortable, doesn't matter. Make sense? Are we all on the same page here? Yes. I don't think they like what I'm saying, Tony. <laughs> okay? So again, we want to make sure that whatever the time slot we have that's available to work in, we want to sit back and ask ourselves, what is the most productive income producing activity for me to engage in right here that gets me in front of my inventory, okay? Then we want to book it, we want to color code it, and we want to share that calendar with the people that we're working with. Each evening, you want to take time to make your top 10 lists and do your appointment setting